There's gonna be a 10X for Maneater. Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this is gonna be your Raid Shadow Legends wrap up for Thursday, May 6, 2021. And we have got a lot of craziness going on. The 10X for this weekend. It's not live right now, but I'll go over all of the champions, not only Man Eater, but lots of good stuff going on in that 10X. So I will get you full context on that. Let you know what you should be doing in terms of if it's a good idea to pull or not. The Void Rebalance is live. The next iteration of the Doom Tower is live. Clan vs. Clan is going on. And I will get you all caught up. So let's get into it. Alrighty. So first of all, the 10X is not live right now. Like I said, you want to make sure and click the I here in the summoning portal. And then down below here, they will usually feature the 10X champions and show you that is live. So it's going to be live this weekend. I'm just getting you the information of what is upcoming. So don't go pulling shards yet. The 10X is not live as of you recording this, but it will be this weekend. And the champions that are in the 10X are going to be Sathalia, Duchess Lilithu, Blindseer, Manaya, Maneater, Sky Touch Shaman, Quargan, and Ashok. So now let's go through each one of these champions just really quick and give you the, uh, the short rundown of them. Sathalia is a, a pretty good legendary known mainly for her aggress ability, which is the uh, the booked up 100% chance of AoE buff strip and also decreasing the turn meter while also filling the turn meter of all allies. She can do that role pretty effectively, a great AoE buff remover. Then Duchess, I mean, do I really need to say anything about Duchess? She's widely regarded as one of the best and most universally uh, helpful legendaries to have on your account. She's an amazing progression champion. Can really help those early game players clear content that there's no other way they'd be able to if they didn't have her. Uh, she's amazing in the Doom Tower. Double S tier. Uh, used in almost every stage when people have her on those tough areas to clear. Uh, yeah, so I don't really need to go into her kit. Duchess is absolutely incredible. Uh, tag team arena, defensive arena teams. Just so much value that she brings to an account. One of the best overall legendaries in the game. Blind Seer is uh, really underrated. She's a very solid legendary that brings a lot to the table. 115 base speed is insanely high. And she just does a lot of cool things. Uh, decreases turn meter on her A1. She can block debuffs for all allies and uh, give shield. She also revives. And then she'll place block damage on them. And then she's got an all battle defense aura of 34%, which is huge. So Blind Seer, definitely underrated. She's a solid legendary. For Manaya, I mean, she's not a trash can, and she's also not godly. She's just kind of, eh, she's all right. Uh, I think her main role in the game is for people that have Coronar, because the tandem of Manaya and Coronar can actually be pretty insane. Now we move into the epics, and we'll start with Sky Touch Shaman. A pretty insane healer. Uh, you get her built right, she can definitely crank out the heals. Be a great source of dungeon and faction wars progression. So uh, a really good void epic, definitely solid. Quargan is a new Lizardman epic, and the cool thing, I think, is the attunement ability here. It's going to be based off of kind of the stat that that champion is based off of. So it's going to place Perfect Veil and increase attack on allies whose attack is higher than their defense. So basically your damage dealers. But if their defense is higher than their attack, it's going to place increased defense and a block debuff. So uh, kind of cool, uh, a fun little role in the game where it's going to uh, tune to to who the buffs are going on and, and kind of make sure you're getting value no matter what. Uh, so yeah, very good for Faction Wars, a pretty solid epic. Ashok the Wenderin is definitely getting a lot of love in the raid community. Uh, and I see a lot of people using him in like the Spider 25, the new, uh, the new level 25 dungeons. So yeah, Ashok definitely a fun epic and it can bring insane value if you build the right team around him. And the last champion that's going to be in this 10x is Maneater. I never thought they would do it, but here we are. We've got a 10x for Maneater. So, uh, wow, what I would have given to have this a year ago when I was... It, it took me about 1,500 Void Shards to get my first Maneater. And then after that, I got my second one uh, pretty quickly, like within the next 100 or so. But had really bad luck in getting a Maneater. And uh, what I would have given for this 10x event to happen a long time ago. But... Here it is, and uh, this is a, a, an amazing opportunity for some of those early game to mid game players, or even people who have bad luck like I did for a while and don't have a man eater yet, because man eater 
is such a staple to have on your account. If you're if you're still using kind of like beginner clan boss teams, Man Eater is the key to unlocking some of those insane unkillable comps. Getting one or two of these guys on your account is definitely account changing. So I think a lot of people are going to be yoloing for Man Eater in this event that don't have him yet. Or even if you have one, getting that second one can be absolutely massive. Getting that God composition going where you've got like Seeker, Painkeeper. And then double man eater pairing up with a DPS, like, like a Fane or a Rosin or a Draco. It's part of that kind of core four comp of Seeker, Painkeeper, double man eater that we see is so common in the endgame clan boss. So again, just to conclude, that 10x is going to be Sathalia, Duchess, Blindseer, Mania, Sky Touch, Quargan, Ashok, and a man eater. So my final thoughts on this is uh, it, it's one of the best 10x's they've done, in my opinion, because you've got Duchess on the non voids. And then you've got Man Eater on the Voids. So, uh, yeah, both both champions are amazing to get if you don't have them yet. Um, I, I think the main feature of this 10x is going to be people who don't have a Man Eater yet or people who really want that second Man Eater YOLOing Voids to get Man Eater during the 10x. Now, your odds are better in chasing a champion for sure during the 10x. I normally recommend uh, pull your shards during a 2x, but Man Eater can be so game-changing and just the quality of life of having that that unkillable comp that's just boom, two key ultra, super simple, get that up and running, uh, full auto. You, it takes like five seconds of setup time to get that key rolling. So such a game changer in clan boss teams. Uh, I think, you know, I think this is going to be one of the best opportunities to pull for people who don't have a man eater for sure. So that's kind of my main recommendation on it. Um, I, I have Duchess and man eater. So for me personally, it's not going to be an opportunity. I'm going to wait for a 2x. But... For people that are looking for either a Duchess or a Man Eater, definitely a good opportunity here to pull some shards during the 10x and see what happens. And then also the new uh, missions are live. So you can see here, uh, if you had, if you were already kind of endgame and had your Arbiter done, there is now more tiers. You can see here, boom, boom, boom. And then finally leading up to the last champion, we get another champion at the end. You get Arbiter kind of right there in the middle, and then you keep going in the missions, and you're going to get this champion right here that I can pull up. Ramantu Drake's blood uh, and he's definitely got a cool kit. I'll go over it really quickly I did send this out uh, as a tweet and in the community tab of my YouTube channel So maybe some of you have seen this I think it got uh, shared on reddit as well and now he is actually live in game So uh, you don't really need that infographic But that's just something I put together for people that were curious about the new champion But um, yeah, the, the base stats are pretty good 105 base speed. You love that 1500 attack for a damage dealer he gets the 50 resistance and accuracy tandem so yeah base stats pretty solid uh th th this is very wordy so hang in there with me i'm going to try to do my best to give you some context on this kit but just know that it's going to be wordy so we're going to attack one enemy we can book this to 100 percent chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the target's skills at random by one turn and then a 25 percent chance of placing a stun on the target for one turn if a skill has hit the maximum cooldown when that ability procs and then if the cooldown increase is successful will also decrease the cooldown of one random skill by one turn of the ally with the highest turn meter with a skill on a cooldown. So, like I said, that's very wordy, but you're manipulating cooldowns of not only your opponents, but also lowering the ally with the highest turn meter. So, the person who's going to go next, you can, like, snipe an ability and get it off cooldown for them. And that can be super impactful in the right situation where that actually procs. The A2 is going to be attacked one enemy four times. Now, uh, in subsequent hits, the first one, decrease defense. The second one, weaken. The third one, decrease speed. The fourth one, block buffs. And then uh, and then we're also going to be able to book this to 100% chance of placing true fear on all enemies for one turn if they have four or more debuffs after that attack. So he can do it himself. If he lands all four of those, boom. And then he'll try to place a true fear on all the enemies. Or you have him going second or third, maybe after somebody else places some debuffs, poisons or something. As long as as long as that one target that he's really picking on and placing all this stuff on, as long as they have four active debuffs after that, he will place true fear on the whole enemy team for one turn, which is uh, pretty insane. You get all that to line up, that's a, a bonkers ability. The A3 attack all enemies. We can book this to 100% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies before attacking. So it's AOE buff strip and then AOE damage. Also, we're gonna we're gonna be blocking active skills on champions without passives, or 
we're going to be blocking passives on champions that have passives. So uh, really insane. That's a new mechanic that we haven't really seen before. So yeah, uh, you're starting to see that this guy could absolutely do some uh, like just crazy things in, in the right situation where he's getting these things to proc. Then we've got a passive when enemy, whenever an enemy places the CC stuff, stun, sleep, etc. on this champion will instantly fill this champion's turn meter by 30% and place 30% uh, increased speed and a shield on himself, and the shield's equal to his max HP. So he's not an HP champion like a miscreated monster or something. It's not going to be an insane shield, but it's a passive, and there's no cooldown on it. So, yeah, uh, if you're facing people that are placing CC, he's just going to keep getting more sustain and then getting uh, the, the speed on himself while boosting his turn meter. So definitely, uh, like I said before, crazy ability when you're getting this stuff to proc. And then we're going to get increased ally accuracy in all battles by 80. So he could be good for some of those Doom Tower bosses that have like 350 resistance to help you bring some of those champions that are built for dungeons to now be viable in the Doom Tower without having to go crazy redoing everything. Uh, so yeah, awesome kit, fun stuff, new mechanics, good aura, uh, 80 accuracy is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, pretty decent base stats, 105 base speed. So yeah, I like what they did here. I think he's, uh, he's going to be a pretty fun one. And something interesting to take note of, is that his face is actually the logo of the Lizardman banner right there. You can see how it really lines up and it's very obvious when you look at uh, kind of the, the the under the mouth stuff and then the, the sides coming out and then the, the, the horn with the two things on the side, uh, just the shape of how everything is looking there. He is definitely the face of the Lizardman banner. So just a cool uh, little, little kind of snippet of info that I kind of noticed about his face in relation to the Lizard banner. And while we're on the subject of champions, remember those voids that were being rebalanced. This is already going to be kind of a longer wrap-up video, so I'm not going to take 10 minutes and go through all of them. But your Visix, your Whirlwind, Soulless, those void champions that were changed, that stuff is live in game. You can see here on the Whirlwind, uh, he is also going to be placing the decreased accuracy that cannot be resisted. So all those insane changes that were coming to some of these void champions, those are live in game. So definitely take a look and take note of the champions that are in your roster that you may want to be using in certain places now. And hang in there with me, we're not done yet. We've also got a Doom Tower reset. So this is going to be, uh, so basically there's two versions of the Doom Tower right now in Raid. You've got like Doom Tower A and Doom Tower B. Doom Tower A was the one that we had at first, but those four bosses, the Scarab, the Frost Spider, the Magma Dragon, kind of that, that first iteration that we saw for three months. Then Doom Tower B was the one we just had, where they added the Griffin and, and the Eternal Dragon, and, and it was a little bit different with different secret rooms and stuff. Now this one is going to be Doom Tower A. We're going back to kind of the Scarab and, and, and what the Doom Tower was for the first three months. So uh, a little bit confusing, but that's kind of how it works right now. So it's going to be that main Doom Tower that we were familiar with for the first three months and that did reset now you may want to think if you're if you're a player that is doing normal and hard you may want to think about doing normal first because then you can progress in these missions a little bit faster some of this uh doom tower stuff starts on normal so uh for this month specifically this doom tower if you're an end game player that's kind of starting on these end game after arbiter missions you may want to clear the doom tower on normal first or at least kind of pay attention to how that's progressing and just something to kind of keep in mind when you're diving into this new doom tower the Clan vs. Clan matches are also live right now, so uh, good luck in your Clan vs. Clan matches. We are in an absolute barn burner. It's going to come down to the wire. It was, it's within a few thousand points here. It looks like both teams are going to be going for the uh, the level 10 milestone rewards, and it's going to really come down to the last few hours here on Clan vs. Clan. So uh, good luck in your matches, and I hope you're able to win and get those accessories. Then if we dive into the tournaments tab, uh, right now we've got the Ice Golem tournament going on. Um, this is just kind of your normal Ice Golem tournament. And like I said in my last wrap-up video, maybe be a little bit conscious that we've got rule, uh, the, the rule fusion event starting next week here in a few days. So uh, be a little bit careful on your resources in preparation for that. Some of this stuff is just kind of uh, calm before the uh, storm type of stuff that uh, you, you don't have to feel bad about skipping, in my opinion, if you're saving up for next week. But it's champion training. Classic Arena Takedown uh, is going to start tomorrow. Then if we go under the Events tab right here, we've got Dungeon Divers kind of coinciding with the uh, with the Ice Golem, and that does end uh, here today. There is a Legendary Book here at the end if you do want to grind. Uh, not a bad opportunity to go for like the Relentless set in the Ice Golem and, and grind that up if you have the resources to do so. And then there's also another Artifact Enhancement event. I would at least go for the 1,000 right here, scoop up those Core Hammers, and then if you want to save resources in preparation for the Rule stuff starting next week, Totally understandable. Now we'll head on into the shop and see if there's anything worth uh, taking note of here. Let's clear this stuff out. And we've got 
Okay, uh, the 2.5 million. Um, do, 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 the thousand energy. Okay, and then no gen. We've got the five epic five. Okay, so that's a 1.5 with some charms. Yeah, I mean, not going to be great, in my opinion. Maybe for a high spender that really needs the legendary books or something. But uh, for people diligent about spending, I don't think that one really makes sense. Uh, the Mega Mix Pack, why not? We, let's plug it in here. Um, doesn't look super amazing or anything, but let's see. We got 160 brews, 350 gems, um, 5 days of XP, uh, da -da -da -da, 160 of the... The uh, brews, we put that in. Now we got the chicken, the eight four stars, and the ten five stars. Uh, 2.01. So, I mean, it's not the worst offer in the world, but it's not one that I would recommend personally. Um, Divine Crit, $20 for five star gear. No, we're not going to be in the market for that. So that'll do it mainly for what I wanted to cover in this video. And then just to remind you, the 10X this weekend, not live right now, but this weekend will be for Sathalia, Duchess, Blind Seer, Mania, Sky Touch, Quargan, Ashok, and Man Eater. So I anticipate it to be a pretty crazy weekend for where lots of people are going for that Man Eater because they want to get to the point where they have that, those unkillable comps. So I think that's kind of the main takeaway of the 10X coming up this weekend. But uh, Duchess, definitely nothing to sneeze at either. So definitely some cool things on both the non-voids and the voids for this 10x so lots going on if you want to come hang out on stream i will be live for the next few hours if you're watching this video right away there will be a link down below in a pinned comment where you can come hang out and we'll be discussing all this stuff going on so that'll do it for this one as always thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace